countenance. I have no idea. Let me uh, use Google again. Some people see poetry as a blank for emotion. Outlet, outfit, outburst, outrage. Cumulative, pious, habitual, turbulent. Bloody hell, guys. Okay. <laughs> And welcome to the only show on YouTube where a fully qualified English teacher fails at answering Japanese university entrance exam questions. We are looking at Kindai University. Standard word fill question, you know how they work. Pick the correct word that fits into the sentence. Except for these questions, there's ten of them. I'm going to explain the meaning of every single word. So this could take some time. Hopefully it's going to be okay. The next video I will be recording with my girlfriend, Charlie, uh, who you have met before on this channel a long, long, long time ago, um, which is going to be looking at the sentences that are sort of the best fit or that make the most sense. So that will be next week and I'll cover that later. But for now, we are doing word fill questions. Uh, I'm recording in my back garden because this is England and we don't get much sun in England, so when we do, embrace it. Um, and it's currently half eight at night, and it is lovely and sunny, so feeling pretty good about this one. Anyway, without further ado, into the questions we go. Question number one. At the checkout counter, he purchased some bubblegum on a blank. Whip, whirl, whistle, whim. Fairly common phrase in English is on a whim. So the answer is number four, um, and it kind of means without thinking. You just, yeah, go on, I'll, I'll do this. Um, impulsive. It's a very impulsive decision, on a whim. The other words, we have whip, whirl, and whistle. There are a few different meanings for the word whip. The primary one is sort of like a, a weapon. You know cowboys? Yeehaw! Old West America, they have a whip. That kind of thing. Whirl. The meaning for the word whirl is a bit similar to the word spin, where you sort of twirl around like that. If you've heard the word twirl, whirl, same thing, turning. Um, and whistle. I'm gonna whistle on camera and this might make it sound horrible, but... <whistles> whistle. Um, birds whistle, that kind of thing. That's what a whistle is. But the, the phrase here is on a whim and it means sort of impulsively, without thinking, that you do something. Okay. Question number two. I used to view everyone as either friend or blank with no middle ground. We have foe, foul, fret, fright. The answer here is foe, number one, and friend or foe means like, you know, well, friend, you know what friend means. Foe is like enemy. So, I did a Star Wars reference a few days ago. You know, you've got Obi-Wan Kenobi, who Anakin Skywalker starts as a friend and then becomes a foe later on. Foul, spelt like this, is a female bird. <laughs> so, definitely not that. It's a, it's a, I think it's a female chicken, but it's a female bird of some kind. Fret is similar to worry, like don't fret about it is the same as don't worry about it, and fright is like a scare. So if you're frightened, you have a scare. So it's the noun of frightened. Okay, question number three. If you approach him with that angry blank, he will meet you with the same expression. Coverage, countenance, compound, containment. Um, this is difficult because this I don't think is British English, I think this is like an American English phrase. The only one I think makes sense is one, coverage. I think that's the answer, but I might be wrong. Um, coverage, in this sense, I think, means like facial expression. So angry face. Coverage means news, on the news. Um, a reporter on the news will provide coverage over a topic. So for example, everyone knows the big thing that's happening at the moment. All over the world, the news are providing coverage on this. It's, it's to cover all of it. Difficult to explain. In this sense, I think it means facial expression, and I think it's American, because I don't understand this. I'm trying my best to guess. <laughs> Countenance. I have no idea. Let me uh, use Google again. Qualified English teacher, by the way. Countenance. A person's... Right, that's embarrassing. So the answer for this is um, number two, countenance. If you approach him with that angry countenance, he will meet you with the same expression. Countenance means um, facial expression. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> so apparently uh, countenance means facial expression. There you go. I didn't know that, now you do. Uh, compound, you can have compound words. So when you have 
one word and then a dash and then another word. That's a compound word. Um, and you can have compounds as sort of an area of land where it's a piece of land surrounded by a wall. That's also a compound. And containment is the ability to keep something inside something else. An example being, you know, you, you keep your pets in containment of your house or in a cage, uh, unless it's a cat, because cats don't care about what you think, they do their own thing. Okay, on to question four. Some people see poetry as an blank for emotion. Outlet, outfit, outburst, outrage. The answer here is one outlet for emotion. It's like an outlet is a way to express something. So video gaming, for example, is an outlet for anger, maybe, or an outlet for joy. You could be happy, that kind of thing. Outfit is what you wear, you know. My outfit today is a Overwatch t-shirt and shorts because it's hot. Well, it's not anymore because it's nearly 9 p.m., but it's that's what I'm wearing, that's my outfit. Um, an outburst is, you can have an emotional outburst if you cannot control what you're feeling and what you're saying, and you just start getting angry or shouting, that's an outburst. Uh, an outrage, actually very similar. When there is outrage, like public outrage, everybody's mad, everybody's angry. Uh, very useful for describing the UK at the moment. There's a lot of public outrage because... No, I'm not going to get into it. Okay. Question number five. I'm sorry, I had a spelling blank on your name. Lace, laps, lag, lament. The answer here is two laps. Um, having a spelling lapse or having a lapse in judgment means you briefly forget something. So uh, if I have well, if I have a lapse in judgment, it means I didn't think properly for just a second and I made a bad mistake or I did something wrong. Well, lace is a kind of material that you can make clothes out of, typically like underwear and things. Um, lag is when you're a bit slow on something. So you can be lagging in an English classroom because you don't quite understand what's being said. You know, you're, you're not on the same page as everyone else. You're a bit slower than they are. And that's fine. Everyone has lags like that. Uh, and lament. A passionate expression of grief or sorrow. So having an overwhelming feeling of grief. So if somebody dies, you grieve for them. You remember them. You feel sad. That kind of thing. Okay. Question number six. The conference was called off yesterday because of the blank political situation in the host country, leaving several important issues unsettled. Cumulative, pious, habitual, turbulent. Bloody hell, guys. Okay. Because of the turbulent... Yeah, for turbulent political situation. Uh, turbulent ha is the adjective form of turbulence. Turbulence, have you ever been on a plane and you're sitting on the plane and then suddenly you start shaking and the plane's going like this. That's turbulence. It's a bit shaky, up and down. Uh, if you have turbulent political situation, it's a bit unstable, a bit shaky. Cumulative means you gain more as time goes on. So if you're playing football, or in the, in the English Premier League for football, you gain cumulative points as you play more games. So, you know, you start with zero points and you work your way up. You win, you get three. You draw, you get one. Cumulative points over time. And pious, that's another Google, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what pious means. Nobody ever uses pious. Devoutly religious, very religious. Um, uh, a pious Christian would be somebody who believes wholeheartedly in the Christian religion, for example. And habitual, the adjective form of habit. Uh, you should know what a habit is, a habit is something you do sort of every day. And habitual means, you know, that's the, the adjective version of, of habit. Okay, number seven. He was putting his car in the garage last night when his cell rang. He got blank by the sound and bumped into the fence. Distorted, alienated, distracted, sorted. This one should be fairly simple. Three, distracted. If you're distracted by something, you stop paying attention to what you should be paying attention to. So for example, if my phone rings over there, I stop the video and go over to my phone. That's getting distracted from the video. Um, distorted means sort of changed um, in a bad way normally. If you're on the phone and the person you're talking to is distorted, you can't hear them properly. It's like a change, a bad change. Alienated means to be separated from someone or something. So, I don't know, if you have a group of friends and they all say, oh, we want to go watch a film, and you're like, no, I don't, I don't want to go watch a film, and they get mad at you 
you've been alienated by your group, you've been kicked out. And sorting, sorted, is organizing. So you can sort people or things into different places. And if something's been sorted, it's been organized or dealt with, um, completed. Question number eight. At six o'clock this morning, the police received an blank call identifying the murder victim. It was from a payphone. Elementary, intimate, anonymous, oppressive. Uh, answer here, three, anonymous. Just like the hacking organization, anonymous means nobody knows who you are, or you keep your identity secret. Elementary, you sh as, as Japanese students, you should know elementary, um, meaning young or new or inexperienced, because you go to elementary school. We don't have that in the UK, but elementary school, which is young school, when you're like five years old or four years old or something. Intimate. If you are intimate with somebody, you're very close. Um, you talk a lot and you understand each other. And oppressive. Um, the UK government. <laughs> oppressive means very controlling. Um, if you're oppressive, you are controlling and strict, and you don't let people do things that they should. Number nine, let's not get blank of ourselves and start buying furniture before we've even found an apartment. <laughs> Funny, uh, exactly the same thing happening to me at the moment. I'm looking to move as soon as possible, and I'm already looking at things I want to buy, even though I don't have a flat to put it in. Uh, ahead, before, forward, front. Answer number one. Um, very common phrase. If you're getting, if you're getting ahead of yourself, you're thinking too far in the future. You're, uh, you know, outrunning yourself almost. Um, think about the now before you think about the future. That's what it's saying. And finally, question number 10. No matter how hard Mike tries, he'll never blank up to his father's expectations. Meet, walk, live, go. Answer here, number three, live up to his father's expectations. Relatable. It means your father believes of this much. Your father wants this much, but you can only ever get this much. You will never meet his expectations. You will never live up to his expectations. Uh, so why did I say live and not meet? because you don't say meet up to, you just say meet expectations, not meet up to expectations. Walk, we know what walk means. And I would walk 500 miles. <clears throat> that is the end of a very long and waffly video. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you're staying safe during everything that's going on at the moment. Next video is the second part of Kindai University. We'll do some sentence questions and it'll be not just me, but me and my girlfriend Charlie as well. You may be wondering why I'm outside other than the sun. Charlie has actually been streaming, live streaming are at twitch.tv forward slash kitty You can check that out and she's currently got my PC and my webcam so I'm outside on my laptop. But thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Sayonara.